guys, welcome back to the third episode of the NicoCast. I'm here with Cliff, the founder of Speechify, so tell us about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Well, Nico, first of all, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, let's see. As Nico said, I'm the CEO of a company called Speechify. We use artificial intelligence to make it easy for people to scan any physical book and have it read out to you. You can upload a website, a PDF, um, and it helps a lot of people like me who have dyslexia and ADD, but also a lot of professionals. Um, I do backflips. I dance. Uh, I love kind of growth hacking and figuring out how to make like life the most amazing possible. And I do that in every single area of my life. And I'm excited to share more with you guys. Why did you start Speechify? So when I was about to start going to university, I needed to decide what I wanted to do with my life. And I thought I would either be an entrepreneur or I would work in finance. And when I was in high school, I had already built a couple of projects. I built this... Um, pressurized air cannon that has a fire safety blanket that you could shoot on houses and it would stop the fire. And I built another company that um, went to all the businesses. I went to all the businesses around where I lived, all the restaurants and got 10% discounts. And then I made a card and gave that to students in my high school. And I thought to myself, you know, I like building businesses. So then when I got to college, I started building more of them. And I built a 3D printed break for longboards and skateboards I created. I built a biotech supplement that if you rub it on your arm, it helps you grow muscles faster. Um, I made a bunch of apps and websites, uh, but I'm also super dyslexic. So first, second, third, fourth grade, I couldn't learn how to read no matter how hard I tried. Uh, and if you're dyslexic, it's the case that it takes a lot of energy to read. Like it really makes me tired if I need to read a sentence. Think about doing like a four digit long division equation in your brain without paper. It takes a lot of energy. So every sentence, consumes that much energy for my brain. It left definitely when I was younger. So after uh, a paragraph, you're very tired. After a chapter, you're done, you're falling asleep. Um, and so I ended up falling in love with audiobooks. I listened to about 100 audiobooks a year, usually two audiobooks a week. And when I started university, um, I went to school at Brown, I realized that I was not going to succeed in getting through all the readings because most of our material that we needed to read for school did not have an audiobook. So I built a text-to-speech system for my computer that made it super easy for me to highlight any text, click a keyboard shortcut, and have it read to me. And then I built an iPhone app that let me do the same thing, but also let me scan physical books. And towards the time I was going to finish school, I was trying to decide what I wanted to work on full-time. And I wanted it to be something that created real value in the world, that made um, money from that value as opposed to off of ads. And I wanted to build like a simple app or website um, that was really useful to people, ideally people who were similar to me. And I did this thought experiment. If I was a billionaire right now, what would I want to work on? And I really wanted to solve dyslexia. And around the same time, I read this paper about the application of artificial intelligence to text-to-speech, or for the first time, if you do text-to-speech at near human quality. So I thought that was really cool. So then I added that to Speechify. And then I went to talk to a couple of principals of schools for kids with uh, learning differences. And I snuck into a couple of conferences. And when the main speaker at the conference finished talking, I kind of jumped on the stage. There was like a hundred people, a thousand people in the audience. And I was like, hey, my name is Cliff. I wanted to show you guys this thing. And I plugged in my computer and I showed them the early version of Speechify. And 15 of the schools offered to fly me out to teach their kids how to use Speechify. And that's how the company started. And that's why I'm working on it. Great. Um, do you have any hidden talents? I have a lot of hidden talents. Many, 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 many. Um, let's see. I can wiggle my ears independently of each other. Um, wait, here's the left one. Um, I can do backflips. I can do front flips. I can dance salsa. I can break dance. Um, I have a semi-perfect auditory memory. So when I listen to stuff, it's very easy for me to remember it. So I have the first chapter of Harry Potter memorized. Um, as well as like half of the founding documents of the United States of America. Um, yeah, a lot of them. It depends on which category you're asking about. The whole uh, whole chapter of Harry Potter. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, what are your hobbies? Um, good question. So I love working out. And I got into working out uh, maybe halfway through high school. And it was because I saw a movie of Prince of Persia. And the main character, Jake Gyllenhaal, had like this awesome line between his shoulder and his tricep. And I was like, that's awesome. I want that. So I started lifting weights. And then I learned how to eat properly. Um, and that became something that I really loved. And when I was six years old, 
I saw a movie where Jackie Chan did a backflip. And I was like, whoa, I need to learn how to do that. So then I got my mom to sign me up for capoeira and then gymnastics. And then we moved to the U.S. from Israel. And I, I couldn't do gymnastics anymore because it was expensive. But then I saw a guy who did a backflip in some park. And every time I'd see anyone do a backflip, I'd ask them, where did you learn that? And I found this like recreation center. Um, and I went there and it had a bunch of mats. It was like, I don't know, three, four miles from my house. And every time I would go, um, I convinced the guy that if I got to a certain level, he would let me come for free. So I trained really hard to get to that level. And then I learned how to do backflips from like YouTube videos. And then um, I do the sport called parkour and another one called tricking and free running, which are all under this umbrella of like cross between gymnastics and martial arts. Um, I like to freestyle rap and write music. And recently I've been getting more into running. Um, I like dancing. I love audiobooks, so I listen to a lot of fantasy books, a lot of sci-fi, uh, a lot of nonfiction, a lot of biographies, um, yeah, and a myriad of other hobbies. Great. What's a typical day being the CEO of Speechify? Yeah, so a typical day, so we have a remote team, which means we have like 20, 25 people working on our team, but they're all over the world, but our core team is with me usually in L.A., and so that's like me, Simon, Chaitu, Alec, Taylor. So I'll wake up and usually I'll wake up and directly hop on a call, something like this. Um, and it could be with another teammate. It can be with someone that we're working with. And then I'll make a six egg omelet with um, four egg whites and two whole eggs with delicious salsa sauce. And then I maybe will make like another one or two for the guys I'm living with. And then Simon will be working on some product uh, product feature for Speechify. And like I'll chat with him about that product feature and we'll decide what are the biggest priorities for us to work on. And usually it's in order to improve one of the metrics of the app. So for example, we want to increase the percentage of people who start a trial who convert to being paid subscribers, or we want to increase the percentage of people who download the app, but then end up listening to a hundred thousand words within the first week. And so we'll see what we can build in order to encourage them to do that behavior. Um, we'll see what bugs we can fix. We'll respond to customer service requests and see, oh, people want to be able to scan, I don't know, receipts. So we start coding to make sure that you can easily process receipts or we add a nicer voice. Um, and so I'll just do that work on either product or doing calls um, until about uh, noon. And then we'll go grab lunch. We have a place called The Coop, uh, which is like Whole Foods, but cheaper and better, um, which is connected to our building. And we have like this nice pool and a hot tub and a workout area. And then around, uh, I think 8 p.m., I'll go work out at Gold's Gym, which is where uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger still works out today. He used to work out when he was young. And then after that, I'll go and do parkour, either at this place called Tempest or at another gym called Jam. And there's just like a lot of really good um, trickers there. And then I'll go back home. Maybe I'll go on a date. Maybe I'll hang out with friends. Maybe I'll read a book. Uh, the entire time I'm listening to audiobooks. So the, the first thing that happens when I get out of bed is I put in my earphones and I start listening. And then I'll cook while I'm listening. I'll eat while I'm listening. Only when I start having a conversation with someone else do I stop listening. Um, and then if I'm working, I stop listening. But then the second I get on my bike, on my car, on my longboard, um, I'll go back to listening again. And that's a difficult day. What are your expectations for Speechify? My goal is to get 100 million people to use Speedify every day. Um, and that's that's what we're working towards. Um, we're not there yet, but we're, we're going to get there soon. Um, and yeah, if we get that, we're very happy. So our goal is to increase human potential on the wings of audio. And so a lot of people don't read which to me is really sad because my life has been completely changed by books. And I was for a long time in a place where no matter how hard I tried, I could not read. And so I'm really glad that Speechify as a product exists because it means that it can unlock that potential for so many people. And so now Speechify is used by like, like millions of people with dyslexia and ADD and a lot of professionals too. Um, and so uh, most of them are based in the U.S., so we're just now spreading through the U.S., and our goal is then to spread to other countries because Speechify can already be used in most languages um, and uh, and really improve people's lives that way. Do you think you will accomplish those goals? 
Yes, very much. I'm in fact certain that I will accomplish those goals. And I think it'll happen in the next two or three years. What's your favorite thing about Speechify? Ooh, uh, the team. So I work with this amazing guy called Simon, and he's originally from Bulgaria. And the way we started working together is he sent me a message on Facebook um, and just started helping me. And um, we became super, super good friends. He's like my brother. Um, we end calls with, that, with I love you. And the same thing is true for a lot of other people on my team, like Chai too, like Alec. Um, and it's just so special to work with other people who are oriented towards the same goal as you and really motivated in life, both to work on a startup and to work out and to read books and to self-improve and to like think how to make themselves a better person. Um, and then I'm very fortunate to be working on this product specifically because I personally use Speechify 300, 400 times per day. And it means that my belief in the product never wavers. If you're trying to build some social media company, like a Snapchat clone or Instagram, you don't know if it's going to take off. Like it really needs to get adoption. For Speechify, it's useful to the individual person. And it's so useful to me that I know it's going to be useful for other people. Now, now we're adding features that allow Speechify to be collaborative and we'll make it so that it's useful for you in a group, even more than it's useful for you as an individual. But my belief never wavers because this product fundamentally changed my life. Um, and so I'm very glad to work on a product that has had so much impact on me and that I know can have so much impact on other people. And a lot of people say, oh, I want to make money. So they go and start some company in finance or something like that. Or they try to go make like one, 10, $100 million as soon as possible. And then they say, okay, after that, I'm going to do some good in the world. And I don't need to do that. I can immediately go and do good in the world with Speechify because it helps people who have disabilities like me, but at the same time, make a billion dollars. So that's good for me. What motivates you to keep on doing Speechify? So the only thing that would make me, or let me rephrase that. I have what's called shiny object syndrome. So when I'm working on something, I just, I come up with like 10 different ideas per day of stuff that I could work on. And I keep wanting to work on those ideas. And in college, that's what I did. I worked on like 36 different products and I'd start working on board break. And then I'd think about working on like a coffee delivery app. And then I think about working on a biotech supplement. And then I think about working on a payments company. And I kept flip-flopping between things. But I realized that you don't make progress like this. You make progress like this. You go in one direction and when you hit a wall, you pick yourself back up, you take a couple of steps back and you slam into the wall again. And then you pick yourself back up, you go back again and you slam into the wall again. And you do that a hundred, a thousand times until you get through that wall. And then you get to the next wall and you do that again. And that's how you make true progress. And you got to do it in one field, in one area. So I committed that the place that I'm going to do that in is Speechify. Um, I am just super internally motivated. There's just like a fire in my chest uh, that's roaring. And I want to become the best person that I can be. And I know that for me to do that, uh, creating really good products and really good things um, is a fantastic way of realizing my potential and creating value in the world. And so I'm always going to be motivated to build things. Just the question is, what is the thing that I'm going to build? And because I have committed myself to Speechify and we've made so much progress, and I know that the most progress is made like this, I'm motivated to keep working on this project and not other projects. Now, there has been a time when it was difficult for me to work on it because we didn't see as much engagement as we wanted. There were some issues with the team. And I thought, okay, if I was to work on something else, what would it be? And I almost worked in something to do with Bitcoin. I almost did something else. And I did a super deep analysis of like, what should be the area that I work in? And I realized that whatever I do, it should be the intersection between artificial intelligence, audio, and learning. And I was like, wait, that's Speechify. So, if the new company that I would build would always be in the area of Speechify anyway, I might as well keep going with Speechify and make it successful. Great. How did you record the voices for the text-to-speech? So we actually didn't need to record the voices for the text-to-speech. Um, we used open source libraries of publicly available voices. And the way that the artificial intelligence works is historically, um, people use what's called concatenative text-to-speech. So some lady, um, she actually went to Brown University, sat at Apple and she recorded her voice and then they made the original Siri based on that. And that's copy and pasting speech utterances together. But then the advanced Siri voice is 
you take a bunch of voice audio and the transcription, the text, and you put them into a black box. And the black by itself figures out the pattern. And then if you give it transcription again, text, it will build the sound wave from the ground up to make it sound like the voices that it should be. Because um, speechifies algorithms are based within artificial intelligence. There's a subcategory called deep learning. And within deep learning, there's a subcategory called neural networks. Deep learning is really good at pattern recognition and neural networks mimic the way the human brain works. So these things are good if you give them two inputs and then you give them only one input, they'll figure out how to make the second input. And so that's what we do. And so if I wanted to, I could take like an hour of audio from Morgan Freeman talking in a movie and make a voice from his. Or I could take um, all the podcasts that Nico has done and make a voice from his. Um, and so that's a project that we're working on that we'll release at some point in the future. Um, it's like a little comment. I, I found this website. Um, it's called 15.ai, where like you basically choose like a character, for example, SpongeBob, and a bunch of like other movie characters. Mm -hmm. And you can make that person say whatever you want. For example, you can no make SpongeBob way. say hi. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's say a big company wants to buy Speechify. Would you accept it or would you like decline? No, I would not accept it. I would not accept it. Um, Different people have different mentalities and I am very much an entrepreneur. I love being the captain, charting my own team, recruiting the team, leading the team. Um, I can see a situation where someone that has like a lot of resources to help us connect really wants to work with us. In that case, I would try to make it a partnership, not an acquisition. Um, Speechify has so much room to grow and I would not want to part with it. Um, I think that we can, unlike a lot of other startups, like we're already making money from it. Um, and so it makes sense to keep going ourselves. A good response is, um, I think in 2014, Mark Zuckerberg tried to buy Snapchat from Evan Spiegel and he offered him $3 billion and Evan Spiegel said no. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg was very annoyed. And Evan Spiegel, in my opinion, did the right thing because let's say Evan Spiegel would walk away from that deal with a billion dollars in his pocket. Then he would need to invent something new that he wants to work on that gives him energy. And Evan Spiegel, like me, loves to build things. It's unlikely that he would succeed in building something that takes off as much as Snapchat did when he did it the second time around. But Snapchat really was an incredible one-time product. Um, so for Evan Spiegel, it's better off to have a little bit less money, but be the CEO of Snapchat and still control all of Snapchat than to have more money in his pocket, but the the hold and following what Mark Zuckerberg had to say. Now, in addition, in the end of the day, Evan Spiegel is much more rich for having declined the deal because Snapchat kept succeeding. But it could have been that Snapchat would have failed. But even if it would have failed, he was still good enough financially where he could take care of his basic needs. He could buy a house. He could pay for food. He could pay for his kid's college fund, um, even if it failed from that point on. So... Uh, I think that the real move is you build a thing to a place where it's really healthy, it's doing really well. Um, you find some security and then you keep going and you try to make it as big as you can. And that's definitely what I want to do. And usually when people sell their companies, it's because they're fatigued with the project. And I can't imagine becoming fatigued about Speechify. Okay. Is it hard being dyslexic? It is. It's very hard. Um, it's mainly hard because you're dyslexic both when you're old and when you're young. And when you're young, the one thing you're supposed to do in school is learn how to read. And it's something that I kept failing at. And I didn't know I was dyslexic until the end of third grade. So my teachers thought I was slow or stupid. My parents thought I was being lazy. I wasn't slow or lazy. I was awesome. People just know this. So I needed to show them that I was awesome. And luckily I got diagnosed and that made it easier for me to understand what was going on and find other paths of succeeding in reading. It's also very difficult because uh, being dyslexic makes you read slowly. It means that reading takes a lot of energy from you. It also impacts like spelling and stuff like that. Uh, for me today, Speechify solves all the problems. The only things it doesn't solve perfectly is when I'm skimming documentation for code, it's hard for me to find the right stuff. So I usually use command F to find that. And then I use Speechify to read the additional things. Um, if you're dyslexic, you often mix up your left and rights, and it's kind of difficult to remember people's names. Um, 
And a lot of people have their confidence really impacted when they're young and they can't succeed. And people think that they're stupid or lazy. And it's interesting because if you look at it, um, 30% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. 40% of billionaires are dyslexic. But 50% of people in prison are also dyslexic. And so it's this weird dichotomy where either you completely fail out of the system and you slip through the cracks, or you build this like amazing resilience inside you that is with you for the rest of your life, no matter what you do. But with Speechify, it doesn't matter as much. Who do you think uses Speechify? So a lot of people with dyslexia and ADD, which is the main market. And then we have a lot of people who have either eyesight issues and they had a concussion. And then a lot of people who are second language speakers. Um, so I don't speak English as my native tongue. I'm, I originally speak, speak Hebrew. Um, and then doctors, lawyers, executives, people in the military, um, masters and PhD students, researchers, analysts. Um, it's about 20% people with, with those disabilities. And then another like 30% um, those students and another half of those professionals. Okay. Do you have any advice for new startup owners? I have a lot of advice for new startup owners. So the first thing that I would say is listen to audiobooks. Audiobooks are the biggest things that changed my life. And so the books that I would recommend is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, How to Win Friends by Dale Carnegie, Traction is another good book, Zero to One is another good book. Um, and The Lean Startup Methodology. Those are the books that I would start with. And then I would recommend that every potential startup founder learn how to code. It's 2020. There's no excuse not to know how to code. And it's very easy if you put your mind to it, you don't even need to be good at math. Um, there's really good courses on udemy.com on learning how to code. So I highly recommend that. You can buy them for like 12 bucks. You can look up a coupon. That's how I learned how to do iPhone app development. That's how I learned how to do website development. I recommend startup founders learn how to design. So I would recommend a software called Figma that was started by my friend Dylan Field. And you can look up tutorials for Figma as well. Just start off by like going to YouTube and like redesigning icons of popular apps just using Figma and maybe a couple of app screens. And then come up with something that creates real value in the world that you care about, that you would want to work on for the next 10 years and ideally can become a billion dollar company. And if you can come up with a good moat, a way that at scale, it'll be hard for other people to compete with you, that's really good. And then one mistake a lot of people make is they start focusing on building the product before they've validated somebody wants to buy it. So when I started Speechify, before I even built the product, I made a video using Final Cut Pro to fake as if the product fully worked. And I put that on a bunch of Facebook groups and a bunch of uh, Reddit groups. And I allowed people to pre-order the product for a hundred bucks. And I said, hey, this product is not ready yet, but it will be soon. If you want to pre-order it, you can. And they did. And I was like, cool, people are willing to pay for this. And the other thing that I did is I made a bunch of YouTube videos about text-to-speech. And so the most popular videos about text-to-speech on, on, on YouTube before I started Speechify were my videos. And what I should have done is then allow people to subscribe to my newsletter, for example, from those videos. And then I would have had a newsletter with like 100,000 people with dyslexia who were great potential users of Speechify. Who were great, who were great potential users of Speechify. Um, and so what I would say is before you build the product, establish that people will actually buy this product and build the audience first. Build the list of your first 100,000 users by writing content that they would enjoy and then pre-sell the product to them and then build the product. And so that's the safest way in which to start a startup. Great. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, this is the end. My pleasure, Nico. And see you in the next episode, which is pretty big with uh with i'm not gonna say anything but it's i'm excited for it. bye okay bye, -bye. okay